Hello and welcome back to the Cars Ireland YouTube channel. We're back with another battle of the small electric city cars. This week I'm in the iconic Fiat 500 in its all new electric form, the 500e. And I'm about to go and meet Anthony who is in the Peugeot E208, another small and very affordable electric car. So let's go and see which one is the better buy. Carsireland.ie. Click, click. Vroom, vroom. Hello, today. Hello, here we are. Yeah, you met me. Long time no see. I know, we've missed the old twin test, haven't we? I know, me too, yeah. big time. I do think this one's going to be a pretty good one, though. Yeah, some mini EVs. Yes. yes. Would you like to tell me a little bit about what you've brought? Yes, so I have the Peugeot E208. It's got a 50 kilowatt hour battery, a quoted range of 340 kilometers, price starting at 29,000 euro. Now, we do not have the 29,000 euro model here today. Naturally. Yeah, this is the top of the line GT model and it comes in at 33,000 euro. Not easy for me to say. Not easy for any Irish person no. to say, Anthony. So, uh, what a view. <laughs> this one here is not the entry level version either. Unsurprisingly. It is, <laughs> it is, as I said, the top spec La Prima version, which comes in at close to yours actually at 32,500 euro. But it right. is a really nice spec there. Yeah, so show me around. I will, it won't take long. <laughs> So the La Prima spec gets you some really nice details like these black 17 inch alloy wheels. You've got some nice chrome detailing along the side, your little La Prima badge on the side there. Now it is a two door, which I see that. does limit its practicality somewhat. Now it does have back seats. Right. They're just a little bit on the petite side, shall we say. They're, You're being generous there. They're not they? that suitable for human adults, from what I can see, but would you like to try? Shall we do the obligatory of course. man in back of small car? <laughs> I love man in back of small car. <laughs> now, <I've> got <laughs> so this is my driving position. Okay. Ready? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, lost my knees. Comfortable? No. Okay. Really not. Not at no all. No headroom. Not at all. No, not at all. Let me show you the boot. Cool. <laughs> yep, <laughs> we have to tight. keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> that is so tight. So the boot is also pretty minuscule at 180 litres. So to put that into some context, I'm going to say probably about three of those big Dunn stores or Tesco bags for life. So depending on how big your weekly shop is, it might just about do the job. And look, if you ever need to carry anything bigger than it is, luckily enough, quite easy to drop these back seats when you don't have any passengers back there. So where there's a will, there's a way. Can I just point out? Yeah. This is for everyone watching. Yeah. <laughs> that is the smallest part of shelf in the history of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> so E208 GT spec. That GT bit is very important because it does make it look quite a bit better than the lower spec models. You get the 17 inch alloys, the black trim over the wheels, a black roof. You have your E badge to differentiate to tell you this is the E model. Very important. Very important because otherwise you wouldn't really tell. No. And unless you know, you might know you know, you know? Unless you know they know you know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. Very good looking cars to be fair. This GT spec is very very nice and i do notice you've got five doors yes so a lot more practicality <laughs> it won't open the one time it's open. we'll get some shots of you sitting behind yourself yeah. showing off your fancy usable back seat yes right show me the boot so peugeot have smartly packaged the e208 and have not lost out on any boot space over the petrol or diesel models you get 311 liters you can drop the seats down and there's your boot well, this is very nice. You like my E208 interior, I yeah. do. It's pure Peugeot, um, and I'm really enjoying Peugeot cabins lately. Well, not even lately, over the last five years or so, they've been pretty awesome. And this is, it's all very geared towards you, isn't it? It is, yeah. We have very slanty stuff towards the driver. You don't get a whole lot going on there. Yeah, but... like I think I'd prefer to be in your seat, but I do. I like the very sporty vibe in here mm, yeah, and is this sure. um specific to the gt line or some bits? there are some bits specific to the gt line like you get the lime green stitching i like that do you like that the because seats are beautiful yeah these are specific as well to the okay. gt line so they Alcantara have like the alcantara leather. leather yeah and they've a sporty they're quite tight though 
I'd say they'd be comfy enough on a longer spin. They are comfy and they look the business. They do, they sure do. You've got your you, teeny tiny steering wheel. Yeah, how do you feel about that? It's a well. grower. It's one of those things that kind of takes a few days to get used to when you are in a Peugeot, but I don't totally. mind it. I mean, it gives it a bit of a sporty feel, doesn't it? Yeah, I've driven a few now and like that. It takes a day or two, but totally fine after mm. that. Wouldn't and it, it is quite cool the way you're kind of just looking over as opposed to through to see your... And that instrument cluster is awesome. I have to say, I love that slant. Yeah. So what is the infotainment setup like? It's pretty good. This is a 10 inch screen because GT model, I think it's seven inch on the standard ones. Okay. But it's pretty decent, like it, it responds well and you have some quick buttons down here on the dash that bring you directly to the menu you want. Your aircon is controlled in the screen, but you can turn it off via these piano dial buttons in front. Okay. But as, look, it's a constant frustration nowadays with the aircon in the screen and it's just something we have to accept. Yeah, at least they're halfway there though. So if you want to turn it off in a hurry, you can just do it with one press. Exactly. So if you actually want to change the yeah, speed of the airflow, you've got to go to the screen. If you're feeling specific, you've mm. got to mess with the screen. Okay, so yeah. it's, it's a bit of a compromise. Yeah, we have USB-C, USB. You have a nice storage area for your phone as well. Ooh, quick that release. Is nice. Hides a stop you looking at it when you're driving. Ah. As well. Yeah. Safety first. We have an interesting looking gear stick. You have some cup holders, very small armrest. It's nice in here, isn't it? It is, it yeah. is, I agree. Okay, shall we go for a drive? Yes. So, on the road, the E208. Yeah. How, how long will she go? <laughs> how long will she go? She will go 340 kilometers on a WLTP range, which okay. isn't really gonna happen. Okay. Yeah, so for, for example, I picked it up did a motorway journey of 80 kilometers, so all at 120 kilometers an hour, we lost 50% battery. The range started at 300 and was down to like 80 when I got home. Okay, but that was like full tilt 120 yeah. the whole way. Raining. But you weren't doing any of your EV. No, I was Super not preserving mode. anything. Okay. So, I, like we say this so much, but like EVs on 120 kilometers an hour, not oh, really okay. sorted, especially these smaller ones. Now I will say I did adjust my drive here today. I avoided the motorway. I just kept it at 100 kilometers an hour. It was 98% charge leaving, 314 kilometers. And I think I used about 80 of range for 50 kilometers. So okay. not bad. It's still using 50% more than it. Shh, it's fine, it's fine, it's Soon. totally fine. Okay. I mean, it's pretty typical of yeah. EVs at the stage. I mean, <clears throat> look. You could have this debate. The same could be said for ice cars as well. 120 on a motorway, you're burning through fuel. You probably just don't notice as much because it's not as much of an inconvenience. No, it's just although it will cost you. you know? <laughs> it's very true. It will cost you. Yeah, yeah. How's well, the power? Power is good. 136 brake horsepower. Nice. Uh, we have driving modes, so you have eco, self-explanatory, mind that battery, normal, and sport. And in sport, you will get to 100 kilometers an hour in 8.1 seconds. Not bad. Yeah, it's 260 newton meters of torque. So shall we do the obligatory EV takeoff test? Yes. Yeah, I'll just slow down a bit. You're not going to do what you did to me in the Tesla, are you? No, I don't think we're going to get that kind of... Uh, <laughs> but we'll slow down and... It's quick. It's fine. There's no giggles. No. <laughs> There's no uh, madness. A, there's quite a nice sporty feel to it. Yeah, it is sporty. It It is sporty in a sense, but like it rides quite well, I thought. It's, you know, luxury-ish feeling. It's mm -hmm. quite grown-up feeling to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like it does feel, it feels a size up in here. It doesn't quite feel like a small car, I don't think. Now maybe, maybe my brain is going back to like, the original 206 back in the day, which was just the coolest car ever. Best car ever. That was my dream car. Was it? Yeah, I wanted a 206 so bad. Yeah, I'm sure you could still get it. I wanted it in that bright blue colour. My neighbour had one and... You, know, you were just very jealous. Very, very jealous. But that looked like a small car. Yes. This this doesn't look like a small no, car No, it's definitely all. got a big car feel to it. Yeah, it's quite grown up. It's quite sophisticated. Yeah. It probably is one of the better small EVs that I've driven. And like you said, it just feels so usable. Like for, this is unlike my Yours. 500, which I love dirty. It definitely would be usable for a smaller family. Yeah, I can't imagine many issues really. And plus that range, you're gonna get into the 200s relatively comfortably, which is, 
Which is fine for most people if we just admit the fact. Yeah, exactly. I think people have this thing in their head where they want to be able to travel 700 kilometres at the drop of a hat despite that. That not very, rarely, very, rarely happening, very, yeah, very, happen. very true. So the inside of the Fiat 500e, again, this La Prima trim adds some nice touches like this eco leather upholstery with that nice Fiat embellishment. Yeah, that's not tacky though. It's not, it sounds tacky I to write Fiat. I think so, in. no, I actually like it. It's quite cool. Now, cream leather, so again, not very child friendly. I think we've established it's not the most child friendly car in the world. Yeah. Now, it does have three sets of Isofix. Which feels ambitious. It's in the back, to be honest. They may as well be bells on a motorbike because <laughs> um, I tried to fit my child seat back there. I couldn't fit it. Look, I don't want to state the obvious here. I think it's quite obvious yeah. that this is not a family centric no. car. There are racer fix in the front, and you will get one there, no problem. Now, you can't face child seats rear facing in the front with active airbags because it's dangerous. But you can put them forward facing. So, occasional child. Occasional child car. It's very strange to have your two year old, you know, sat beside you in the front though, I have to say. Is it? It's also quite unnerving, especially when they're very impatient and they're telling you to go, go, go <laughs> at, every, at every red light. Yeah. <laughs> so personally, I'd prefer to keep the kids in the back. Fair enough. But I digress. Um, other nice features, this panoramic glass sunroof. Nice little touch because it is a small cabin. Yeah. So it does make it feel a bit airier, a little it does bit help light. bigger. And I have to say, I think the front of the cabin doesn't feel crowded. Like, I think they've quite rightly, this is where the space is. I'm going to stop you. Okay. It's not crowded with us two. Yeah. But if it was me and another big lad, mm. like my head basically touches the roof when I sit up. You'd probably struggle. I'm I sitting guess. too high. Mm. If you're two grown ass men in here, you're rubbing shoulders pretty quick. But other than that, <laughs> Okay, fair point. We're you and I, we're fine. We're, we're, fine. we're good we're and fine. that's all that matters. You've got a leather multifunction steering wheel. Do you know what I really like about this steering wheel? It's pretty. You've got the volume controls and the radio or media controls on the back of the steering wheel here, like oh, flappy paddles. Not a flappy pedal gearbox, a flappy pedal radio. Flappy pedal radio. Oh. I just really like that. I think that makes sense. More of that, please. Um, the tech is really good. This 10 inch touchscreen display, super high def, by the way quite nice to use you've got wireless apple carplay and android auto which nice. is usually reserved you know for the higher end wireless is the gold standard for sure and check out this reversing camera look at it wow <laughs> that is better than my eyes that is super high def that is really good yeah so i was really impressed by that and the system in general is quite good and um, the digital cockpit is also really impressive and it can take over a lot of the functions like it will project your sat nav your media, obviously then the other stuff, keep an eye on your range, etc. But okay. it's got a lot of big car tech for a small car. You've also got some impressive safety features like um, active cruise control and flying spot monitoring. It's nice. How do you feel about the button select gears? I actually love it, yeah. Mind. I love that it's not taking up any space because as you can see, space is at, at a premium. bit of a premium here. So True. instead, look, I can put my handbag down here instead. Aww. Um, you've got wireless phone charging. There's I do a, like the gimmick here of the skyline. The little Easter eggs around yeah. the place are really nice. So that's the skyline of Torino, we've yeah, decided. Yeah, because it's in the door frame as well with it Torino is. and a, a picture an of a little original Fiat 500. Yeah. How cute is that? Um, I see you've also spotted my push button door openings. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Very Tesla. Very Tesla. Very EV. Tesla in a miniature package and um, storage is pretty good too you've got like a little bit down here two usb ports for charging 12 volt charging socket if, if for i don't know no reason and for the old school another little uh, tiny pocket little, down here that you could yeah. put in some i don't know a purse it's very, or a wallet a wallet yes <laughs> it's very pretty it is yeah it's nice do you want to drive yeah so as i mentioned earlier this is the longer range 42 kilowatt version um which has a claimed range of 320 kilometers i didn't quite get that from a full charge this morning so 100 percent gave me 260 kilometers on the clock okay and um, now like that has an awful lot to do with outside conditions but also how the car has been driven to this point which wasn't uh me for the we can't attribute that to you yeah. no <laughs> so someone may have had like a heavy right foot so getting here today i uh, measured my journey exactly before I left. I had 25 kilometers to travel. Some of that was on the M4. I did uh, put the foot down, tried 120 for a while. Now you can see the kilometers start to drop a little bit quicker at that speed. As we've established, that's just something that happens and it's, and it's a problem that ice vehicles face as well when it comes to their consumption. But anyway, long story 
very short. 25 kilometers is exactly what came off the clock. So I would Sounds call it pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah, I'd be quite confident. I don't think I'd get the 320, but I'd be quite confident of getting mid 200s. Depending on. Depending the point. on the driving style, of course. I think we could copy and paste that explanation for every EV at this stage. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's just kept ridiculous. <laughs> In terms of power, it's got the equivalent of about 180 in horsepower. Not bad. For a small car, it definitely doesn't feel slow. And I think like all small cars, they are just in general good fun to drive. I think the electric powertrain added to this one really adds to that because the power uptake is that bit more immediate. Yes. Shall we do the test? Oh yes, okay. You ready? Hold on to your hat now. I just think oh. about So she goes, yeah. she goes. By virtue of being a small car and quite nippy, it feels sporty and it feels fun. Yeah, it does. Now it's not as it's not as cosseting as the two ways. They feel a bit more road noise and a bit more. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah, I'd agree with you there. And I do think that it's the kind of car that when you're at mo, it's not it's it's not at its most comfortable at motorway speeds. Put it that yeah. way. It's not a car that I particularly enjoy ta overtaking a big truck. <laughs> At the same time, like it does have quite a solid feel. It's not like you don't feel like you're gonna blow over or anything no, no. like that. So it does feel solid enough. Yeah, not it's quite just, a grown up, but it's still good. Exactly, it's just the type of car that kind of encourages a more relaxed drive. I would say. Yeah, it's. Uh, I do feel I'm very high and like kind of on it rather than in it. I keep going to lower my seat and I can't. <laughs> oh, and before I forget, this also has drive mode. So I've got normal and then range, which is like a range. to Peugeot for producing no doubt what is one a very very fine example of an electric car yeah. and with my head it would be this one all day long but with my heart I just it's don't think it can match the personality or the character of this one I think if you're spending 33,000 euro you need to go to the Peugeot I think we're going to have to agree to disagree yet again on oh, this one, Anthony. fair enough